So many issues to look into this morning, uh, talking about the Hanatu Musawa saga. <clears throat> I don't want to use the word gate, <laughs> because oftentimes those are the words right, we those use are the words that they for use. issues. But I'm not sure it has anything to do with gate anyway. Right. Those are the words we use for issues like this. And there's also the matter of uh, minister, the ministries and the portfolios looking into some of uh, the issues. And then the commissioners in Lagos, so that's where disqualified, so to speak, right. uh, by the State House of Assembly. These are some of the issues we'll be talking about uh, this morning. But first, let's begin with the Minister of Art, Culture and Creative Economy, Hanatu Musawa, who has been getting knocks from Nigerians over her failure to provide evidence that she participated in the mandatory National Youth Service Program after her graduation from the university. During her confirmation, the minister says she participated in the youth service in 2003, but the commission says she absconded from service mid and withheld her certificate. That controversy has now deepened in the past days following the disclosure by the NYSC that the minister is currently undergoing her national youth service, sparking calls by her critics that she should vacate office. And uh, there's been the matter of what she is doing is a constitutional or not constitutional, whether the basic requirements to be a minister. Uh, the, the conversation has been going here and there with regards to how constitutional is this matter that she is serving the nation. In fact, some lawyers who are senior advocates have said that. Uh, let us take it as she is, it's a service to the nation. Uh, that she is doing now with mm. this portfolio given her by the president. Others are saying, uh, no, the NYSC uh, Act, Section 12, requires every prospective employer ask for certificate of discharge or exemption of any person who is eligible. Mm. And that is what she has violated. Mm. And that is what the commission has said she is not qualified and can be subject to two years in prison because of what she has done. But I am wondering that uh, she went through checks and how did this go past this person, especially the DSS who carried out the checks? Remember the Kemi Adeoshu issue as well. The minister then, for, for the former minister of uh, finance, budget and national planning also had this matter of uh, service uh, certificate. She was exempted. She was the, exempted. The, the, the exemption certificate was said to have been, you know, forged. Right. Certificate forged. So we still have, it still boils back to this matter of NYSC. Mm -hmm. If we have an issue, can we clear that once and for all to actually know where we stand with persons who will be getting portfolios for what? If it is necessary, the DSS has to ensure that this person's NYSE discharge certificate or exemption is readily available. Mm. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, um, we, it, it tends to be, uh, one tends to ask the question, does it, has the DSS done its own due diligence? Because all of these uh, questions will definitely arise if... Uh, some things are not really put into a proper perspective. You know, she was supposed to, she was definitely mobilized, you know, about 22 years ago. Only that, you know, for her not to, uh, because if the only way you can be exempted is when you have attained 30 years of age while still an undergraduate, or you uh, served in the armed forces or police or more than one, uh, nine months, uh, staff of Nigerian security organization, and those conferred with national honors are exempted from you know, the scheme. Uh, she also had that experience you know, where she had not served at the time when pre former President Muhammad Buhari mm -hmm. appointed her uh, to represent Northwest on the board of National uh, uh, Pension uh, Commission. Commission. Yeah. But the NYC Act is itself, according to her, that she has not broken any law. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it should still be, uh, uh, to be seen as uh, one who is also serving the fatherland. Because the essence of NYC is for you to serve your fatherland. So if you are being called upon... Not in this to, capacity. In this capacity, well, if you are still, being, you are still serving your fatherland. Mm -hmm. um, the, the thing there is, the NYC um, Act, uh, uh, the NYC guidelines that's uh, reviewed in 2011, said in uh, number five that you will be queried by your employer if you don't carry out your duties diligently and report... To, uh, report sent to the state coordinator. Mm. So 
she's supposed to be at a law firm, and if she's not reporting to the, uh, to the employer, that will be a problem. If she's not reporting to the state coordinator, so how does she, that report, is how, how but, does but she then, report to the law firm or state employer if she is it, it goes further. It goes further to say that uh, you are not also, you know, leave his or her duty station or absent herself from any official activity without the written consent of the state coordinator. So the only thing there is, if she's taking up this appointment, which is still according to some other uh, people, that uh, it's still a national service. So if she gets the approval, express approval of, that, of a state coordinator and the director general, obviously, I, I think, I think obviously that, that, she that hasn't gotten be... the approval because if she had, the commission will not come out to say that what she is doing mm -hmm. is a breach of the law. If she had done all of that, gotten all of those approval, I'm not sure we'll be having this conversation. Right. Obviously, she hasn't done that. And she is insisting she has not or she is not doing anything wrong. From all you have read, has she met up? Not at all. And, and also, there is another thing that is a bit nutty. Uh, would we say that someone who has taken up a ministerial appointment is also involved in partisan politics? Because uh, under miscellaneous of uh, the NYC Act also says that uh, you should not take part in partisan politics, that any member who takes part in partisan politics is liable to extension of service for a period of not less than three months without pay. Mm. <laughs> so uh, is it partisan politics? Uh, for instance, we have Governor Ian Samwike, who is not a member of the APC, yeah. uh, and is also holding a portfolio in the APC, in the incumbent cabinet. Mm. Uh, cabinet. So uh, would we want to, you know, subjugate that under being a member or, or, being part, or participating in partisan politics? Of course. So I think it's, it's, a, subject, it's, a, subject of, it's a subject of... Uh, you know, conversation. If you look at the narrative before right. um, Wiki took the portfolio, an agreement is an agreement. Right. Let me leave it there. <laughs> and so we see how it is, or what happened, or what transpired, the role right. he played to the emergence of the president. At the end of the day, it's partisan politics. Yes, he's from another party, mm. but he ensured that the president emerged. Now, for Hanatu Musawa, we can also say it is partisan politics. Mm. Because uh, who amongst any of these persons does not belong to any party? Any politi party political party, you know, party so, to so to speak. So she has participated in partisan politics. Mm. And that is why she is there. As an NYC member, a core member, you know that you can also do some other things. Though you can't do personal business, you, know, uh, you can't engage in personal you know, um, uh, assignments. But then you can be called upon to also serve your fatherland in different capacities, as long as it's not affecting your PPE, your place of primary assignment. Is this not affecting it? Uh, well, I think that's, that's, that should be left to Because the, if the, it the, is the, not the, affecting the it, to, the commission... Someone should go to court and challenge this. The commission will not be speaking <laughs> so boldly and loudly if something has not been breached. That is where my position lies. She has breached the law, mm. guiding the commission and how people who are to participate in NYSC, are to go about their businesses. She has breached that as it stands. I am wondering why the commission didn't even speak before now, when she was nominated. nominated. Why did they wait until she was confirmed, given the portfolio, before they began to speak? You should have spoken when she got the nomination. At least something could have been done, perhaps, mm. immediately at that time. This right. issue would have right. been nipped like in the Like seeking, seeking the approval of the Director General. Absolutely. The Director General has the, uh, the power to grant her the leave she wants to, because she only has about four months to, to exit the, NY, the, the, the service. Mm. So if the Director General expressly approved, but I think the approval the Director General normally gives is should not be more than 14 days. Mm. And if she's got for, um, uh, four months, about four months to go. So, you know, sometimes I don't want to say that you can bend the law, but if this is tested in the court of law, that, okay, if you're serving and what I'm still doing in another capacity is still serving my fatherland, then what would you say that um, I'm not, uh, I've, uh, I'm, what's it called? Why, is, why would you say that I've breached the NYC, uh, you know, law act. or the act? So. Um, if anyone takes this to court, I believe there will be argument, and it's based on how you can argue your case mm -hmm. that will determine what, what the, 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 the outcome the, the, will the be at, will the, at, the, end of the, at the end of the day. Right. Uh, but I hope that um, this matter will actually be taken to the courts mm -hmm. because um, the commission has said that um, she could be charged 
taken to for two years in for prison two years in prison. Um, or something like that. Yes, and I'm hoping that the commission will take push further to see how things you know pan out at the end of the day with this matter. And I'm also waiting to see what uh, this administration will do, how they mm. respond to this case, because right. she's a member of the cabinet. I want to believe that they, they must have done their own due diligence. So whichever way this case is going to pan out, of course, she's a very intelligent uh, you know, woman. She, she's got... It's you know, not so in many... doubt. No, no. I, yeah. So the point I'm trying to make also is that, you know, some people who studied abroad, for instance, and they're having issues to coming back home to serve their fatherland, you don't know where you're going to end up tomorrow. You don't know exactly what appointment you might be taking up. You might even feel that, okay, people are calling me to come and run for, you know, president. And if you have not served, that's just that little thing can, you know, throw you off balance and you won't be able to achieve I expected that, that she, since she was unable to be part of uh, the board, the Pensions Commission, mm. at the time, at she, time would she, have, not, yeah. she would have done something to actually address this matter of her NYSC. She's in the process, actually, and, remember? Yeah, she's in the process, but she should have done it, I mean, four months, as 2020. And as a lawyer herself. Yeah. Yes, she could have finished everything by now. That's what I felt. Mm. Maybe she was resting on her oars and all of it and didn't take it as seriously. But now this has been challenged and it's putting a dent to her image. I must state that. It's putting a dent to her image. But how she wriggles out of this will go a long way. And it will also speak to what this administration also stands for at the end of the day. We'll have to leave right. the conversation here now.